generations, broadcasters and journalists have presented a version of the news that they thought was unbiased. Theirs is a history somewhat saddened by wars with the white man. And it's only during the last generation that the hard feelings have been forgotten. When you don't see yourself authentically represented in the media, you lose faith in the media. For Māori, being in the media and showing the world how we see things has taken a really long time. And in most cases, it's because someone went, you know what, if the media won't make space for me, I'm going to make space for myself. Two people who have done just that are Mahingarangi Forbes and Annabelle Lee Mather. Their work on the Māori TV show Native Affairs won them kudos and awards. They both quit in 2015 over claims of political and editorial interference, but soon after carved out a new space with a new show. Welcome to the Hui Māori Current Affairs for all New Zealanders. It's Harawaka Nei. When did you decide we're going to do this ourselves? What had become clear is that our style of journalism was no longer welcome or wanted at Māori television and there was very much um, measures being put in place to try and control us and prevent us from telling those types of stories. I remember when Mahi quit because she like came to it work the next day and she's like, oh my God, I've had like 40 job offers. And I was like, oh, that's good. <laughs> so, that's true. <laughs> and then a couple of days later, I quit. And I saw her the next day and I was like, can you ring me? I don't think my phone's working. I've had no job offers at all. She's, this my is phone her story. She tells this story. <laughs> no one working. offered me jobs either. <laughs> what is your style of journalism? I think if you were to describe our style of journalism, I think there's a strong thread of justice um, weaved through our stories and not everyone's an angel but that doesn't mean that they're not as worthy of being treated fairly or justly as anyone else. Do you guys make stories about te ao Māori for a general audience or do you make stories about te ao Māori for a Māori audience? When I was at TVNZ back in the day and Linda Clark was the political editor at TV1, I often in the morning would look at the story she was doing on the day and then I'd go and find the kind of Māori angle to it. So then, you know, it should run that one and then somewhere in the bulletin my story would run. And um, now I think it's so interesting because what, what I'm kind of doing is I'm doing both those stories melded into one now. I'm going to ask you both, or either of you, uh, to relay an anecdote of a time where you have felt that your particular Māori worldview was misunderstood by a manager, an editor, or a producer in a more mainstream media outlet. TV3, every day. I remember I got a complaint against me for writing a VO about a Parihaka decision where I said, you know, as a result of that invasion, well, I wasn't allowed to use the word invasion, of Parihaka, um, you know, people had, um, had died. But today, now we know the story of Parihaka properly. You know, we know that, um, how hideous it was. But you couldn't say that 20 years ago. Mm. I think the difference between now and then is that we have Māori media outlets now, but what hasn't changed is that in mainstream newsrooms, even though there might be some great Māori reporters in there, Māori is still underrepresented editorially. We're not seeing them, you know, and holding those positions of power in newsrooms. And that's a big problem because that's where angles are often decided. Do you have any advice for a mainstream newsroom about how they can do bicultural reporting better? You have to have it through the top. It should come down through your HR strategies so that when you're employing your, um, you know, it's like a sinking lid policy that everyone that you employ is has a bicultural lens. Because mm. it won't change otherwise. You can have a guy on Espina who is amazing, but you need a whole room full of them. A lot of awesome wahine Māori have paved the way for me as a Māori woman to do what I do and have a voice in the media. 
And hopefully, the more diverse communities see themselves, the braver they'll be in joining our ranks and helping to change that narrative. Things have gotten way better, but we still have a long way to go in becoming the decision makers, the editors, the directors, the producers, the executives. But a lot has happened in the last 10 years, and you best believe that that change is coming too.